What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis coming to you guys with a topic. We're going to talk about Mark Gasol going to, I mean, staying in Memphis or should he leave? Um, first, I want to tell you guys what I think about him signing that extension, I think, in 2015. I didn't really think Mark Gasol should have stayed in Memphis. I know that he loves it in Memphis. It's the perfect place for him. He can get as many touches as he wants. They they believe that he's their first play. He was the best player on the team back then, and Mike Conley has surpassed him now. Mike Conley was had a little bad year this year, so he was the best player on the team this year. Um, Dave Yeager say that uh, him and Marcus Hall clashed a lot. Also, David, uh, I mean Fizdale said the same thing that him and. Marcus saw didn't have the great this relationship and they ended up firing David Fisdale. So um the part that's crazy to me is that Marcus Saw isn't a top ten player. He's one of the best players in the league. He's one of the best passing big men we ever seen. But also is still in this league. He's a solid defender. He's not the all I mean he's not the defensive player of the year defender that he used to be when there was grit and grind. Also, they changed from the grit and grind. They got players like Mario, Tyreek Evans, Ben McLemore, Jamichael Green. They got a little bit more shooting. They got a little bit better bench to me um, than what they had the last couple of years. So the last couple of years, they were just basically trying to find anybody in a D league just to, that can play and just give them minutes. They didn't have a great bench they deal with a lot of injuries and this team is very reliant upon Mike Conley and Mark Gasol and I just didn't feel like they was going to be good enough to win you a championship I don't think Mike Conley and Mark Gasol are good enough as a duo to win you a championship I think you got to have a better player than both of them maybe a small forward that can play X like a Kawhi Leonard or Kevin Durant Giannis, you you, you kind of want those guys that can impact the game, playmaking, defensively, carry the low offensively, and just be a matchup nightmare. Marc Gasol, is, he is a great player. He is a solid defender. He does cause problems because he can knock down the three. Um, he can put the ball on the floor and get to the rack. He can post up and beat you up on the inside. His rebounds has went up because there's more opportunities. He has Zach Randolph used to eat up a lot of those rebounds and Marcus all stayed out on the perimeter a little bit so he didn't get as many rebounds as he could. Plus, like I said, Zach Randolph was an excellent rebounder when he played um with Memphis, getting over ten plus rebounds for a long time. And now Marcus all they lost a lot of the inside. He's getting a he's getting a chance to get more rebounds and his rebounds has went up and as that result, more opportunities, more chance you get to rebound. So he has finally got respectable rebound numbers um, for one of the first times in his career. But he has become a focal point of the offense. The, the, the team needs him to have great games. The team needs him to dominate. Um, and he has been doing it for the last couple of years. He never destroyed teams because he never averaged 20 points a game ever in his season. Although he has come close. He never averaged over 20 points for a whole season. He never averaged 25, 30 points. Like I said, he's not a top 10, top 15 player, um, but he finds other ways to impact the game and impact his, his teammates. The thing about this is, should they trade Mark Gasol? Like I said, I was just telling you guys, I didn't think you can really have Mark Gasol and Mike Conley as your two best players and win a championship. And that's why I didn't like giving him the five the five year hundred million dollar contract. First I thought they wasn't gonna win anyway. And now that we're almost three years deep into his contract, they only got to the first round the last three years, which means it was really defeated the whole purpose of staying with Memphis because you never really had a chance to compete for a championship because after you got your extension you haven't even got out of the first round and you haven't even had really an opportunity to um get a championship but you haven't got farther farther far enough obviously he did not know that in the future but to me it was always obvious as memphis they was good enough to make the playoffs but honestly they wasn't good enough to win the championship 
And now they trying to rebuild their identity, rebuild how they play, and now they got rid of their coach. And now I'm like, it's, it's only getting worse in Memphis. And now they have a terrible record. It's going to be hard for them to even make the playoffs at this point. And now it looks like he's going to waste his fourth year either losing, trying to carry a team, or getting injured because the team need him to do so much because Mike Conley is out. Now, if Mike Conley come back and start having a better season, they still might get to that 7, 6, 7, 8th seed, which means they're going to be on pace to be out in the first round again. So even though he loves Memphis, even though he got the money he wanted, it really didn't do anything for his career but put up more numbers. But he hasn't really improved his dominance. He hasn't really became a top 10 player. Um, he, he was able to win Defensive Player of the Year, but it did not lead him to a championship. And now the team is trying to refine his identity, and now they're trying to get another coach. It looked like they're going on pace for rebuilding, and that's the question I want to have with you guys. Uh, what would you want to trade for Marc Gasol? Do you think he's worth a first-round pick? Do you think he's worth a pick in an aspiring contract? Because at the end of the day, his contract is up in another two years. Do you think you should give him an aspiring and a couple picks? Do you think you should just say, hey, we fired the coach. Let's continue to build around him and Conley, which I don't really think is a good idea because I don't think you'll win a championship with those two players being your best players anyway. They're more complementary to a great team, not really the team. And if you have them as the team, I don't think you'd be able to go that far. Even though they did go to the Western Conference Finals, they still got swept and destroyed by the San Antonio Spurs. And that was a year when Russell Westbrook was injured and they was able to be OKC without Russell Westbrook. So I don't know if you can really put too much stake into it because if they would have had Russell, they probably would have beat the Grizzlies and they would never have even possibly even got to the Western Conference Finals or even play the San Antonio Spurs. But that's just breaking that breaking down that part. But do you guys think that Marcus Gasol is a franchise guy? Can he be your best player? Or is he a complimentary player, like a third or fourth best player on the team? Do you think he's like that? Do you think he can be the, the best player on the team? Do you guys believe that him and Mike Conley relationship is over? They haven't did any winning for the last couple of years. They should blow it up and try to find some young talent or try to get some picks. You know, it's going to be hard, obviously, to trade the Mike Conley contract because he's getting paid so much money. Plus, he had a lot of injuries the last two years. And on top of that, he got a severe injury now, which is his back which can really affect how he plays and really affect if he's going to be able to be great for a number of seasons. Remember, when Dwight Howard had that back injury, he never was quite the same athletically and dominant, and that could affect Conley, who already having a bad season. To me, um, the back injury ain't going to really help him out at all. It's only going to make him worse and make him less mobile and make him less of a threat um, offensively. But um, that's just my opinion. Mike Conley hasn't shot the ball well. He's shooting 38% from the field. He's shooting 31% from three. Um, other than that, he's still averaging 17 points. And like I said, the problem with him is you just gave him that fat extension. And he had one great season, which was last year. And I think the year before that, no, yeah, just last year. And that's when he averaged 20 points a game. That's his career high. And now he's on a decline, having a terrible shooting year and, and having a back injury. And Marcus All has had a lot of injuries too and missed a lot of games himself. And now that his contract is coming close to um, being over, do you want to give him extension? Because you know he's older. He'll probably be 35 years old by the time his contract get, aspires. Do you really want to trade for that? Can he really take you and put you over the top? Can he really make that big of a difference? Um, on a team, can he really take you from a good team to a championship team? I think it's um, um, possible, but it depends on what teams he go for goes to and what um, the teams he goes to and what team he he you get rid of. How much players are you gonna get rid of? On what players are you gonna get rid of to bring him aboard to take you to the next level? and become a championship team. And if you're already a championship team, can he take you over the top 
to beat the Golden State Warriors. They always had a good matchup but with the Warriors. Um, he always had great games against the Warriors. Can he be that one guy that you trade for and he puts you over the top and make you a contender to compete against the Warriors? I don't really know because I don't think he should. He, like OKC doesn't really need him. I can see a team like Houston taking him, but they already gutted their roster for um, Chris Paul. But I can see them taking him, him making a bigger difference because he can still rebound, he can still pass, he can better offensive player than um, Clint Capella. But Clint Capella is a guy that has the perfect role, and he doesn't do anything more than that. And that's a great thing for Chris Paul and um, James Harden because he's the perfect fit for both of those players. And then you'll be bringing a guy with an ego, a guy with talent, and a guy that's going to demand touches and demand respect instead of just letting Clint Capella get rebounds and get alley-oops and dunks and tip-ins, which he doesn't really require to have the ball or run plays for. Um, and that's something that might uh, Marcus all going to require. So let me know what you guys think. Should the Memphis really trade Gasol? What can they get for Gasol? Is Gasol a superstar? Um, should, can him and Mike Conley win a championship? Should they keep him and Mike Conley? Should they trade Mike Conley and keep Marcus all? Or should they just blow the whole thing up? I think they should just blow the whole thing up. I don't think you can win with Mike Conley and Marcus all as your best player, but they own some contracts where um, Marcus all contract ain't terrible because he's still playing at a high level. But it depends on what I'm giving up and who I'm getting back in return and what team I am on that he can make that difference that I'm willing to give up a lot of talent for him while still being able to compete for a championship. If I can't do that, I don't know if I'll trade for Gasol. I don't know any young team that can take him and turn them into a contender, especially with his contract and his years and his age. But like I said, he is still playing at a high level. So let me know what you guys think about Memphis. Let me know what you guys think about Conley. Let me know what you guys think about Marcus All in the comment section below. And we can talk about it and leave a comment. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Check out my Facebook page, AnalysisPlayground.com. If you're not up on YouTube, um, link will be in the description and the comment section below. Also, check out my website, AnalysisPlayground.com. If you're not on the website, it will be in the link, in the link below in the description on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, you already know about the website because that's what's the name of the website. So anybody that's new, subscribe, and I'm gone. Let me know what you guys think about Marcus Hall and the Memphis Grizzlies or if they should trade them.